Two Georgia rookies are flying in Philly. There's new running backs in the league that are going to make some noise. And what's going on with Sauce Gordon there in the Big Apple? We're going to get to it all today on Locked On NFL Draft. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I am your host, former NFL and AFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy. He is at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter. I am at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day and also let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Ryan, I want to definitely, you know, continue to jump in and talk about some of these rookies and, and how they're doing and what the expectations for these guys should be. And we're going to start with a couple of guys over there with the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Two guys who I think people expected to make immediate impacts. But you have Jordan Davis who's going viral with videos and they're talking about his play. They 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 labeled him a menace. So um, I'm excited to get to into him as well as Nicobe Dean, a guy who kind of slipped to the third round, but now all of a sudden, I don't think it's to anyone's surprise, he's taking reps with the first team. So let's start with uh, Jordan Davis and just a guy like him playing in the interior there, playing against a big time guy uh, on the other side of him. But what are some of your expectations, especially considering what you've been hearing out of camp so far? You know, I'm very happy with the way that it's going so far, but take a step it's the first first steps forward right bull rushing a guy that's you know what 60 pounds underneath you that yes that's a good day out you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do but that's not like it's not what's gonna happen in ball games right let's let's talk about double teams and seeing things that that's not the takeaway from jordan davis he clearly looks like he's actually stepped his game up i think his feet look quicker than they did in in pre-draft training at least maybe not necessarily on film on some weeks last year but that's okay it, it's a positive sign that he looks the same kind of player like he, he's not thinking he's not slow he's easy to react it and i think in team you see that he's actually making progress it's not just the same level that, that he's drafted at I, I think that's a positive sign i think that's a game changer for their defense because it's not going to be one-on-one -on -one. it's going to demand doubles he's going to be the guy that is the force in the middle it really changes the way everybody else can flow, including the guy that's standing behind him. Right. You talked about the guy standing behind him. That's N'Kobe Dean. And N'Kobe Dean, he's, he's going to want to come in and be freed up. How are you freed up? Well, when you have some big interior defensive linemen there who can kind of uh, re really – they'll need double teams – for them, uh -huh. right? Like, you'll have to give those guys that type of respect, and that's going to free up your guy at the next level. So, Nicobe Dean, the guy that's coming off of a shoulder injury, and right now it looks like he's kind of primed to really step into that role and be that linebacker that they need him to be. So, uh, we see a lot of really good young linebackers around the league. Can Nicobe Dean be kind of the, one of the next best ones? Especially, I mean, again, we are talking about a guy who was slipped because of injury, but not just with the injuries, you had some other concerns with potentially him in coverage. So do those things still kind of worry you until you see it in preseason pre games? Or are you like, you know what, if he's getting first-team reps, he's doing something right enough to where they're bringing him along the right way? I haven't seen enough of their camp to see if he's really coming up the right way. But his, his strength, in my opinion, is dropping to a spot and then accelerating out of it. He can clearly get to the sidelines. The only coverage issue that I had in going to the pros is being able to turn and run downfield because I didn't see him do that a whole lot on film. So that's my question is, are they walking him out? Are they keeping him protected in the middle? Or how is he going to have to take those kind of assignments? I think we'll see that in ball games. But the bigger concern for me is, how is that shoulder going to hold up? That was a big deal. That is why he didn't get drafted until he did. That's a significant issue that maybe not – showing up as his rookie year, but maybe it's his, his second season or his third season. Like, how does it hold up down the line? Because I think having Jordan there is going to protect him. If he's going to be able to play behind a defensive front that demands that much attention, Jordan Davis is going to take one guy that could, a guard that could be coming up to get him. So it's about recognizing that as the guards come off and try to come attack you and making sure that you play those angles correctly. 
that's, I think, something that he is excellent at. So I, I expect that he'll be able to make this transition and be a guy that's productive. The question is just going to be how fast and when. Yeah, everyone's kind of really anxious to see that. And he was one of my guys who, when we re-ranked the linebacker class, I had him the number one guy. And that is a little risky, especially considering some of the injury reports that you have heard about him. But hopefully they get the, the shoulder surgery uh, or the sh shoulder figured out, get that whole thing situated. Jordan Davis, big-time guy. And these are two guys that maybe you want to yeah, put a little money on on Bet Online. All right, but first, we want to talk to you a little bit about our good friends over at Dave. And I want you to level with me here. And we've all been in this situation at some point in our lives where we're a little tight with cash. Hell, I'm going through it right now. I got my gym building. And there's times where I need a little extra money to be able to do certain things around the gym. And if you are living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be stressful when expecting the unexpected expenses come up. But don't worry because Dave got your back. All right, Dave can help you get out of this pinch when you really need it. Hindsight is 2020 and you can't change the past, but if you can get a little help from your future self, maybe you'd like to borrow a little cash right now. All right, so you can do that with Dave. Dave is a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or just catch up on bills. You can finally tackle all those expenses that you've been stressing about without any hangups. And the best thing about it, there's no interest or no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get their financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you are in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from your future self. All right, download the app right now, the Dave app in, in the app store. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member of the FDIC. Your future you will thank you. We want to thank you for making Locked On the NFL Draft your first listen of the day and let you know that we have all kinds of shows across the Locked On platform. To You know, you want basketball, you want hockey, of course you want NFL, you want college football, you want HBCU. The Locked On Network has something for everyone. So take a look around Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast, they have your team every day. All right, Ryan, let's get into a couple of guys that are near and dear to you and I. We cover a couple of teams that have some running backs that they drafted, but we're going to start with Isaiah Pacheco for the Kansas City Chiefs. What are the reports on him coming out? Because from my understanding, he's kind of getting in there and weaseling his way in there and getting some first team reps. Isaiah Pacheco has done maybe the best job of any rookie skill position player that Chiefs have had in the last six or seven seasons because he took the little sliver of reps that he was going to get for a specific portion of the game on special teams in the kick return slot, and he has expanded that. He showed them enough wiggle, more so than he had on film. On film, I had him, you know, somewhere down in the, in the 20s overall. His production rank was lower than that, to tell you the truth, just because of, of the offense he was in. But his athleticism was number 13 in the athletic matrix. And that is what's really showing up because he's got the breakaway speed. He's got the ability and good enough vision to be the kick returner. Right now, he is linked right there at the top of the kick return team as their number one guy. We'll see if that holds out through the whole preseason. But that's earned him some reps with the ones. And now he looks like, hey, he's his hands are better than they thought coming out. And that's what's getting him more run with the ones. He's a willing and actually a pretty capable pass blocker. And that is always the thing for Andy Reid. If you're going to play as a rookie at the running back position, you have to be able to protect the quarterback because he's going to keep you in at times. He, at the very least, he's going to make you chip a lot. And that's got to be the thing that I think everybody's very comfortable with Isaiah Pacheco in that role. And now anything that he gets between the tackles or, quite frankly, the, the power off tackle stuff is where he's really excelling. He shows that that burst is what separates him from the crowd. He may get himself up the depth chart that he can remain on the 53 and get snaps during the regular season in some kind of cleanup role behind Clyde Edwards-Alaire as well as uh, Rojo and maybe Jarek McKinnon. It looks like they're the four-man race for the Chiefs running back spot. I was going to ask you, where are the Chiefs with Clyde Edwards-Alaire? Because this was a guy who was drafted in the first round. He started off hot, had a huge game, his first game of the season, uh, his career. And then since then, I feel like it's been a little mixed reports. 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you go to year two, there were some injuries. So where is he at right now in his development? He is squarely at RB1. Not a question. The mm -hmm. only problem is, is this going to be the first season that he can actually take a step forward? What we've learned is that he had the initial injury after his, during his rookie season that held over through off-season training. He had sports hernia last year. Didn't even release that stuff to the public. So he played the entire season needing to have some kind of repair. Didn't get to train in the offseason. This is his first full offseason since he got drafted. So he's pretty optimistic. He's running with the ones. He is clearly the bell cow, and he's catching the ball better. And that's, again, what needs to happen in a Mahomes offense. Well, the San Francisco 49ers, they have a running back as well that they drafted in the third round, Ty Davis-Price out of LSU. Different type of back than what they have in Elijah Mitchell. Ty Davis Price is more of a kind of a thumper, but he runs well, has nice fluidity to him. Uh, he's seen the field well. Early reports were that he was kind of struggling with his vision. Mm -hmm. And I was just at training camp the last uh, few days, and I saw a really good running back. I, he was hitting the holes. He was hitting with speed. If there were four yards to get it, uh, to get if the player was blocked up for four yards, he was going to get five or six. You, he made guys miss out in the open space, the first guy, and was able to rip off a few runs. So he had his best days when Eric Crocker showed up. Prior <laughs> to that, there were some ups and downs. And I'm curious to see what his usage is because San Francisco 49ers, again, not only did they draft Elijah Mitchell last season, in last year in uh, the sixth round, and he goes off and almost runs for 1,000 yards, even though he missed like five games. He was just shy of 1,000 rushing yards on the season. He seems to be the like just clearing the way RB1, but there's a battle for RB2. Mm -hmm. And Trey Sermon, a guy that they drafted out of Ohio State and you know, play Ohio State and Oklahoma, Trey Sermon was drafted third round. Yeah. And they just said, you know what? No, we're gonna give this guy Ty Davis Price a chance. We're gonna draft him and he might cut into your reps. Well, there's a battle going on right now. And right now it looks like there's a chance for Ty Davis Price to not only win that RB2 role, but really cut into maybe some of the uh, rushes that they're and carries that they're giving to Elijah Mitchell. It's, it's interesting. So when you take that as a whole, the running back room is super young for the Niners now, right? There's good competition. They've fostered that. And I think that's a big positive, but if you're the front office, are you, are you more happy that you were able to get lower end draft capital to, to get running backs that are now going to produce yards for you or are you going back and trying to rework your decision to take Trey Sermon in that role, knowing that he hasn't worked at that point and he's the highest investment that you've made? It, it seems back and forth with the, the Niners front office for me. Yeah, and it's hard to get a read on them on some of the things that they're going to do. You know, even going back to the – and you talk about front office, the guy in charge, and that's Jay York. He's the CEO of this team. And people forget this. 2014, after that season, they fire Jim Harbaugh. They bring in – uh, Tom Sula, they fire him after a year. They bring in Chip Kelly, they fire him after a year. And then they get some stability after hiring Kyle Shanahan. But they have been an organization that if they feel like they missed on something, they've been quick to really cut bait. And when you look at the situation at running back where I think it's bad value to draft a running back in the third round after drafting a running back in the third round previous year, and that wasn't even the guy that led you on rushing. It was a six-round pick. So the third-round pick at, on the running back, at the running back position, it just never really made sense to me. But maybe they are looking at it from the standpoint of, hey, you know, Trey Sermon, he's just not it. He's not what we were expecting, so he's not going to be the guy to get the ball because the carries. Even though watching them in practice right now, I think he's doing well. Clyde Davis, uh, I mean, Clyde Davis, excuse me, tight of his price, looks to have him kind of beat out. Uh, for that second spot, but he's in there and he's getting carried. So that's something to really keep an eye on, how that role goes. And 49ers running backs, biggest issue they've had, nobody can stay healthy. So mm -hmm. can, when they get health out of one of these guys to be consistent, that'd be really big. We're going to talk about those guys and much more. Uh, next up, we're going to get into a little bit of Sauce Gardner with the New York Jets, his impact at the cornerback position, and a couple of things that Robert Sala had to say about him. But first, we're going to talk to you about our good folks over at BetOnline.net and how it is the fastest and easiest way to check on all your betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. We've been talking about some rookies so far today. And you look at a guy like N'Kobe Dean. We talked about him earlier. Plus 1,800 to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. We're about to talk about Sauce Gardner. Plus 1,400 to win Defensive Rookie 
of the year. So you got some big guys in there that can definitely help. And Bill Line, that's the place for you to find your reviews and news in every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bill Line continues to be the online resource for all your sports wagering information. And they have from game betting, scores, podcasts, they got everything covered. Head over right now to Bet Online today to use your mobile device to learn more about the actions happening today. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Brian. So let's get into it. Sauce Gardner. And this is a guy who everyone has been really high on. And they anticipated him doing well. I've actually heard a little bit more struggles coming out of Houston with Derek Stingley, where it's like, okay, a little rust, and he's still finding mm-hmm. his way, and he's a he's a playmaker. He'll figure it out. That's what you hope. But the Sauce Gardner, uh, everything that's coming out of there is he's doing extremely well. He's got his challenging guys. Robert Salas says, man, I've never heard a rookie talk mm-hmm. as much trash as Sauce Gardner. So it's somebody that's definitely very, very, very confident in his ability, his skills. There was a clip floating around with Sauce Gardner covering Elijah Moore. And someone asked me to break it down. He's like, man, was this good technique? It's like, yeah, it's great technique. He stayed square at the line of scrimmage. He trusted his length, uh, turned around with him, got a phase, got his head around. It was incomplete. So what are your expectations for Sauce Gardner as a rookie? My, my expectations are pretty much that this is what we should expect for training camp. And that when the real bullets fly in the regular season, he's going to have some struggles. Somebody's going to get the better of him because right now I don't I don't care if you're going 100% quote unquote on a camp day. It's not the same as playing an opponent on a regular field Sunday. But the thing that I like to hear is that if he's talking that much trash, I think he'll be a guy because every interview that I saw, his confidence was was kind of smoldering. Right, he wasn't out there. Now that he's out there talking it. I think he's a guy that's going to have that struggle. He's going to have that guy that gets the better of him. He's going to be able to bounce back quicker because he's talked all this stuff up. And he's a guy that leads from the front. Everything we know about him is that if he puts his mouth out there, he's going to back it up with his body. So I look forward to that point because right now, I don't know what you see in that clip or, or any other film that you've seen him. It seems an extension of what he did in college. When he gets beat, when somebody does get the better of him, it's that next step that's going to make him the player that he's going to become as he has to jump up his skill level, redouble his efforts, and that's what will make him, I think, eventually a Pro Bowl caliber player. Yeah, and to even add to that, one thing that's really going to help him be that Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl caliber player is the mental aspect of things. We know he has the physical abilities. That's a long 6'3", 200-pound cornerback with really good movement skills, but you got to be a step ahead mentally at the NFL level. And that was one thing that really jumped out to me when I got to the league. It wasn't so much about my ability to just cover someone. They're looking at it like, look, these are all NFL players. These guys can Mm -hmm. cover. There's not a ton of difference between two guys unless you have, like, a cornerback that's just elite, right? But the thing that I saw separated guys and even separated people for me was the mental aspect of it, being able to identify alignment, formations, uh, when somebody motions to the other side of the ball. How quick can you make that adjustment to knowing exactly what your assignment is? So if he can get those things down, and you talked about you know, being able to play well consistently, and when things don't go his way, having that short-term memory cornerbacks are supposed to have, that's what's really going to allow him to be that legit cornerback that they drafted, number four overall, number four overall. Hey, and more power to the Jets for making that investment because I think when he does get to that point, I think a lot of what I, I saw and heard pre-draft that a lot of his study is about technique and about a guy's tendencies, alignment, how they come off the ball, their releases, making sure that he can thwart that. I think the next step for him is going to be how he understands what the quarterback's thinking and anticipation, yeah. especially off of those motions like you talked about, that are really designed not only to give a clue to the quarterback, but to throw off some of the younger players that are out there on the field. Yeah, and this is just defense. They're going to need him to play good. Uh, they've talked about this defense flying around. They're making plays. That's going to make it easier on your offense, right? Zach Wilson heading into his second year. You still don't want to put everything on him. This is a quarterback that threw less than, uh, completed less than 60% of his passes last season, uh, threw more interceptions than touchdowns. And that was with him not throwing any interceptions over like the last five or six weeks of the season. So 
get your quarterback going, take a little pressure off of him so he doesn't feel like he has to make the plays all the time. It starts with Sauce Gardner, him being able to erase receivers, and hey, throw the ball to the other side. Throw that DJ Reed, who I really like DJ Reed. He came over, got a bunch of money from the Seattle Seahawks. So uh, Jets are in a good position. Do you have any like bold predictions with the Jets and maybe what they are heading into 2022 season? I want to say that they're going to be able to rebound and that the defense is going to be the backbone that, that props up the offense. The question is always going to be about health with this team, right? Kai Becton, something happened to him early on Monday morning. Reports are just coming out as we record this. Not sure what that is going to entail. But that drops down the ability of Wilson's progress, in my in my opinion. And that just puts that much more pressure on the defense. Now, I want to see more about Jermaine Johnson and how he – and Sauce, in particular, can help each other. The, the coverage, backing up and giving more time to the, the rookie pass rusher to get there, and opposite, right? So I think it's going to be a little rough early, but I think with what we know about the way Salah runs a defense and about the talent that both those two guys, as well as the rest of the defense, contain, I think you're going to see them come on midseason. The question will be, can they stay healthy enough to keep the offense scoring enough points to maintain that? Because if you get – you get pumped up midseason, you got to win games to keep the rookies in there or they're going to hit the wall. So I, I'm optimistic at this point. Let me put it that way. All right. You might be a little more optimistic than me. I don't know. <laughs> something about the Jets and just the aura around that organization. I hope it works out and we'll see. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On NFL Draft. Uh, we want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, you got Locked On Chiefs with my guy Ryan Tracy. You got Locked On 49ers with myself and Brian Peacock. And – you all kind of shows across this network, your team every day right here. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.